Hello, everyone at home. Welcome back to our favorite place to be on a rainy day. It's Adobe Live. It's your community for weekly inspiration. If you're new to this, you'll find plenty of replay and live streams on Behance. Have a look around and I hope you'll find, you know, some exciting conversations to be a part of. So if you're watching on YouTube, you might be missing out on our live chat today. Um, we're on Behance, woo, struggling already, Behance.net slash live. Uh, so move over and come and say hi in the chat. We're over here. Housekeeping done. Let's get cracking with the stream. I'm joined today with Tim, my Photoshop guru here today, and our fantastic guest, Mike Will, who's joining from London. How are you guys doing? I I'm doing fantastic and I'm really, really excited to see and learn more from Mike. Yes. And um Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be good fun. I'm excited to be here with you guys and yeah, hopefully bring you guys on a little journey of, of kind of the way that I edit and the way that I see the world through uh yeah, through my eyes with photography and being creative. Nice. We have an awesome masterclass planned today. Um, we're deep diving into photography, like you said, and finding out a bit more about your world and where, you know, and how you got to where you're at today. So uh, we'll definitely take a look at that. As mentioned, you're a photographer, so you have a really clear liking for the urban world, I saw, um, and, you know, storytelling in general. Uh, so also keen to find out a bit more about where all that came from in terms of inspiration. Um, but yeah, let's you introduce yourself, uh, take it away. I know you have your portfolio ready there, so we might also um, take a little detour to that before we start opening up Photoshop. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So my name is Mike Will. I am the visuals on Instagram. And yeah, I've kind of been into photography for the journey's not been that long. It's been about five years. Um, it's kind of when I got into it. Um, and yeah, jump straight into it really like with anything I do. Um, I was really into kind of just learning as much as I could about photography. When I first started, it was a lot of landscape because that's happened to be what was around me. Um, but then I moved to being more central and closer to London. And that really kind of gave me the the ability to, to go out and shoot constantly, shoot urban. And that's really where I found my style and my kind of, you can really see in the aesthetic here, um, if we scroll down a little bit to, to some of the photos that are, that are around, that it obviously does have this quite neon and, um, electric feel and I love shooting at night I love being out at night and creating at night and something that that I didn't really you know when I first started shooting was was that you know you take a photo at night it doesn't necessarily I would always see it as this really exciting and vibrant cityscapes and then obviously then having the power of, of Adobe and Photoshop and Lightroom to be able to then bring it to life was kind of how I got my unique style and that's kind of where um, I've definitely made a name for myself in the industry is because of the editing style that I've kind of um, got on Instagram. And something I learned quite early on was was to have success on social media, or at least for me personally, a way to, to do that and to be able to shoot so many different styles was to be consistent. And the way that that then obviously then uh, came about was consistency in editing rather than consistency in just shooting landscape or just shooting portraits, or whatever it might have been. So, um, yeah, that was definitely then brought about with obviously the blue style um my my cousin nights and lights in australia he was a big inspiration early on um and he shot a lot of night stuff so i kind of was just he was into instagram and i was like oh this is cool um like five years ago i was like so I'll, I'll get into it and then yeah so that was definitely like a a, a cool um thing to to have and then yeah now obviously it's a combination of everything from from portraits to, to landscapes to whatever so it's definitely a uh it's definitely a, a, a fun to be able to shoot anything and make it link nicely on the on the Instagram feed. Um, again, a lot of it is 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 urban, and the great thing is I've then managed to to work with some amazing clients and brands around the world as well with that. So being a Sony ambassador is awesome because they've obviously seen some some of my work and working with them very closely is great. Um, I also work very closely with um, obviously with you guys Adobe which is amazing uh, to be an insider uh, and then there's also other brands like uh, Samsung and Joby um, and Google so I've been really fortunate to have some amazing clients over the over the last little while so um, yeah and also, have you attempted sorry. any other kind of sorry just interrupting with no, questions good, already go, go, yeah, good yeah no, um, I like have it. you, it's good, it's good. great awesome um, have you tried any other kind of you know photography how did you was it easy to go in towards this kind of urban style or were you you know always kind of um, also playing around with kind of daylight or anything else like that yeah so I, I uh, early on like I just wanted to do everything I really wanted to be yeah. well-rounded and at the time I felt that it was very much you either went into portraits or you went into landscape or you went into to whatever it was that specific kind of niche in a way 
And I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So therefore being able to do everything and be open to the idea of shooting everything was, was a, was a big factor for me. Um, and the, my favorite thing to shoot was light trails and shooting at night. And so you can still see that's still my favorite thing to shoot. Um, but I have attempted and done everything pretty much that I can, that I can think of. Um, and just had a go at it because I wanted to, as I said, be well-rounded. So I understood the industry. So I understood how to produce anything. So if a client did come to me and say, Hey, listen, we need, we want your night stuff. We want some, whatever it might be, but we also want something else. I can then go, yeah, that's easy. I can do that. And then now that's transitioning into the video side of things where I'm then trying now trying to adapt to video and then be even more rounded, but it's a case of time and, and uh, time management for all of that. But yeah, everything, anything and everything, especially early on was, was key to, having success i think nice and you're mentioning traveling a lot how's that been for the past year we were just talking before the stream yeah. that you know we'd love to travel again yeah i can't wait to travel again obviously um in europe here we've had some some restrictions and in the uk things are looking up a little bit so hopefully fingers crossed this summer will be a bit more normal uh but i used to travel a lot with tourism boards so i used to that used to be a major income of mine so um you know i'd be in vegas for 10 days shooting for the tourism board there then i'd be flying back and suddenly being Croatia, doing something for the for the yachts or whatever. So like, it was amazing to have all of that and just see the world and what an opportunity to, to have come about literally through Instagram, um, which is which is amazing. And it's been very tough. Obviously at first it was really tough, but then I've kind of adapted. So I moved to central London in January, which was a great move um, for me to then be closer to the action. And even when we were in lockdown, it's a four minute walk to Tower Bridge. So literally on my daily walk, I'd be at Tower Bridge, no matter what the conditions were. It was awesome to see, shoot some. Lucky um, you. Some, yeah, <laughs> some some fog, for instance. Like yeah. when we did have some amazing conditions, I could then just go out and literally, yeah, like, I mean, I'll pull one up here. This was just, you know, a sunrise where suddenly the fog came in. And um, yeah, it was it was obviously something that was that was quite unique. So being close to, to all of the action has, has definitely helped. Um, Helped not being able to travel and then car photography. I got got quite involved in some some amazing car projects, which I actually need to be start posting about. But um, you know, we're doing a lot of work with Bentley, which has been great, um, and some other brands as well. So again, that kind of just changing the industries. I had to then move away from the travel, which was tourism boards and actually uh, music festivals with some some amazing DJs, which was obviously so fun. And then moving into a lot more tech um, and car automobile photography. So. Yeah, it definitely had to change and I miss it a lot. And as you said, um, prior to this, I can't wait to to get, and it's just that, that, you know, honestly, the biggest thing is just inspiration and, and kind of something new and fresh. It's been so hard to stay inspired. And I'm sure many of you guys watching and, and you guys as well um, will have just struggled to continually maintain that inspiration and, and creativity. And that's something that for me has been the, one of the biggest things because, you know, meeting people, there's nothing like meeting people and shooting with other people and being creative and, and that's something that's so big and key for, for, for me that, that we haven't had. And it's been really hard, but there's definitely been ways around it. And I think everyone's adapted, um, but I can't wait to, to do those first few trips again. It's going to be so fun. Yeah, I think one way to handle it has been kind of networking online and like community as well. And I know you pulled up Instagram immediately as a channel where you, you know, put your work out there. So, um, you know, is that the kind of a place where you also keep on living or um, is there any other channel that you kind of um, you know, live by? And um, Yeah, so it's, it's pretty much all Instagram. I just launched my TikTok, yeah. which, uh, oh, nice. which I know that Adobe's setting up soon. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I've just kind of done that. And it's very early on. Again, it's m.visuals if anyone wants to check it out. So uh website is here but kind of i feel that all my work comes through my instagram so having obviously a nice website is great and i and i love it but at the same time the instagram platform is so powerful now that you know 90 percent of my work comes through that and then i mean here are some of the brands that i've worked with i need to be updated a little bit but i feel that because instagram's constantly being updated and the websites are not necessarily the website's up to date and then suddenly six months later it's not so whereas instagram is just constantly um at the forefront but i'm also i mean you mentioned people and community another thing that uh that i run which is really amazing fun is, is the shooters community so we're an amazing um creative community actually around the world that host well hosted photography events for creators um to come to and not only shoot content but also meet other like-minded people so i'll bring up the the uk shooters page here for instance so um yeah so we we obviously host these amazing events or used to host these amazing events um, and we will be again soon uh for people to come to and just network and yeah as i said have fun and um we were getting before we started having to ticket them we were getting uh, about 450 people show up 
um, in the central London, which was obviously getting a bit big. So then we've had to ticket them, but they're always free um, and open to everyone. So the idea is that people can come along and yeah, just have a good time and meet and meet people. Because when I first started photography, it was quite a soloist hobby. I didn't feel that in the US it wasn't though, it was very different and they had this much more approachable approach to it where it was, you know, you just randomly start chatting to someone who had a camera and in the UK everyone was quite, you know, cagey and not necessarily like that. Um, I'm not sure what it's like in Germany. Um, but I was like, I'm going to change this. I'm not up for, I'm not up for that. I want people to be approachable and um, through some some massive events early on and it's actually then completely formed the, the community, especially here in London with now lots of people having their best friends and their friendship groups all based around who they met at those first few events which is awesome to to see and, and some, now my, some of my closest friends are all the people that I've met through the shooters events and who helped me run um this amazing community so yeah that's been that's been big as well so I'm looking forward to 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 doing those um events again soon as well so do you have a timeline for that are you when are you guys coming back in what kind of format well we're, <laughs> so we're waiting for Boris <laughs> I'm already poking at you like <laughs> <laughs> Um, exactly. So yeah, so we're looking to run some events um, in the summer. Is all I can say, nice. really. All right. Um, I'm, I'm actually away on a I'm on a road trip with the with the with the squad, Luke, Keenan, and Cyrus. Um, they're all incredibly talented um, photographers. So we're on a road trip this weekend for Bentley, actually, um, nice. running, creating some content and doing something. But then the actual events will hopefully start again in the summer. But it, <laughs> We've, we've got things in the works basically but we can't have a date because if suddenly mm. the government says no you can't have groups of people together then we're gonna have to not do them it's pretty unpredictable but yeah great exactly, for the chat to know yeah. as well um tim do we have anyone in the chat just a little sidetrack um yeah, I, I know was, we have people joining today <laughs> i was about to any say, questions yeah hit me I up i didn't yeah. want to interrupt you um but um <laughs> we do have a lot of people who are joining us today of course welcome if you're joining us on Behance, if you're joining us on YouTube, like I said earlier, make sure to come on over to behance.net slash Adobe Live or be.net slash Adobe Live for short. And we do have uh, Sandrine and Angus and Oliver and uh, screen down a bit because they wrote a, wrote a lot. Mode we have here and we have Jackie and Loom and so many other people. And they're all saying these photos look amazing they are talking a bit about the hotel that you had in there the one at the road grand budapest hotel Ooh. and uh, also some people joining us from brazil thank you so much for joining us must be very early time uh, yeah time difference <laughs> that's commitment and eduardo it. from brazil says i don't understand much english but the images speak for themselves and i truly agree nice. even just going through all the different photos you can really see a theme and a vibe going on and that's super important especially if uh, if you have all those images presented right next to each other and um switching gears for just a moment because we do have some photos uh for you uh, for the chat today that mike will edit as far as i know right yes. because um yeah <laughs> Would you like to, you want to uh, crack on? Yes, I would love to see that yeah, because of course. We, we, otherwise we won't uh, have enough time at the end. <laughs> I can talk yeah, all no, day. Of course, of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I'll so, save some and I'll just throw them at you randomly. <laughs> yes, please. No, yeah, honestly. <laughs> like, like, tell us about your childhood. Yeah, I can talk all day. So for lunch just yesterday? Shut, shut me up and get me editing is, uh, is a big part of why we're here. <laughs> Let's um, do this. But yeah, so one of the first images um, that we're going to gonna work on today and just go over is um so obviously from my instagram page which you guys just saw a lot of what i have done and, and been kind of known for is the light painting so that's just with a light stick or it can be even with a phone or a torch or whatever it might be um so a long exposure and then usually it would be two or three images blended together um in photoshop so color grade um for me i obviously lightroom is, is an amazingly powerful tool and i learned very early on that was just how I learned my my color grading. So therefore there wasn't anything else that I was ever using. Um, and that's just been my workflow since pretty much since day one. So opening it up in Lightroom um, as we have it here. So for instance, obviously I will take multiple multiple shots and I'll then go through to then see what, um, what will be the best fit. So I'll show you the after, but we'll go back in and we'll edit it. So the finished image is going to be this. So just so in case anyone hasn't seen it on my feed or wasn't aware of this campaign. So this was a campaign for Sony to, to showcase the Sony a7C. There was a lot more to it. It's a really cool thing. And I'll, I'll put a video link to it on my page or something after this. But basically, um, yeah, so three photos for this one. You can see, obviously, the first part is, is going to be me. Second part is the top 
uh, light trail and the second part is the um, bottom light trail. So in my thought process for this one, taking the image for anyone thinking about doing something similar or how they might want to use it. So obviously having myself um, as the subject, I didn't want to shoot me last because I would be very dark. So the idea was that I would shoot me first and therefore um, that would bring the most amount, obviously during blue hour, that would bring the most amount of light, light to me. So the first section will kind of be just me here with the camera um, sitting in this cool spot in London. Then the second shot was obviously multiple <laughs> attempts at getting this light trail. Now, again, it's never going to happen at once. You can see here, this is the part that no one ever gets to see. <laughs> There's plenty of attempts that have not worked and have not been quite right. And I'm here with uh, my friend Rich because we were doing this project together at Paper Boyo and we were here together. Um, he's also an Adobe Insider. Um, he was here clicking the shot for me, making sure that and telling me not down a little bit, up a little bit. I think you should redo that or not that one, for instance. Um, and then eventually you'll get one that you're like, actually, that could be the one. And that was this one here. When it loads. Yeah, so we have this one here. So obviously then I've color graded this. Um, change the. This is the original. So if we hit oh. backslash, we can go to <laughs> the from the original difference. It's just yeah. Yeah. So, and, and in yeah. fact, Tim, any any questions you do have on editing, let me know, because I kind of I've never been taught. I've never watched. A, I'm not going to lie. I've never watched a YouTube video ever on anything to do with editing. So it's all self-taught. So a lot of the ways that I edit are probably quite backwards. So if you have any tips for me, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> and there, was, there was also a question in the chat. Um, if there are any courses that you recommend uh, doing or taking. What if you self taught? I'm, I'm, pl I'm, pl I'm actually <laughs> planning to release one. Oh. Um, probably it'll probably be in the autumn, but, which is obviously quite nice. far away. Um, but I really want to work. I really want to work with with Adobe to actually have something and, and obviously release a preset pack, but not just a preset pack because there's so much more to it. As you'll mm -hmm. see here, for instance, in every single um, bit has like, for instance, everyone just thinks, oh, well, to get the blue, you must just move the temperature down. Well, actually, no, because every time you move the temperature, it depends on the image and the white balance and how everything has been set up. And then also what, there's so many things to it. So actually just slapping on a preset, although it's great in a way, there's way more to it. So therefore there needs to be kind of this learning experience with it. And that's why I want to do it properly and not just bang out a preset pack that will be okay. But anyways, so that's, yeah. that's a, that's something for the future. But yes, yeah, so you can see if you hit tab backslash here um, before, after, obviously, um, for that image there. So because it was originally a red um, light trail here with the, with the light stick I had, um, I wanted it to be orange because that's a much, that's a Sony um, color. So I adjusted the, the hues, the temperature, um, messed around with, yeah, everything really to get it how I wanted it. Um, then I did the same thing with the third one, which is this, and not really focusing on the top of the image, only focusing on the bottom half here, because at the end of the day, that's all I needed. So that was making sure that all this was clean. And basically that's the image, that's the bit I was, I was probably, let me see if I brushed. Yeah, so you can see there's a lot of brushes here um, and there will be on all of them to, so that would have been making the temperature, making it cooler. These ones will have been to just slightly change the exposure, bring it down to draw the eye in. Again, exposure down massively. So uh, temperature down. I assume you would start out with a global edit and bring down the lights and the color temperature uh, globally, and then you would refine uh, those local edits using the, I suppose, the brush and the sliders in there. Or how does this usually start when you have like a new image, no edits at all? Where do you start? Yeah, so I, I, I tend to just have like a, I kind of just go through everything. Yeah. Um, I might have a, I might have a preset, like I have some presets, but they're not necessarily, um, I'm going to get rid of them because that's Luke's. Um, they're not overly, uh, I mean, I use them, but they're pretty old. Like I, they're something old. So I usually, I'll have a copy and paste from a previous edit that's quite similar. So where the lighting is quite similar. So maybe it's a blue hour shot, maybe it's a night shot. Um, I'll check it out and I'll basically just completely readjust everything. And then once I had that one, for instance, on the on the this one here, which I knew was going to be the base, which is this one, I then co copied and pasted that onto the first one, which was going to be me, and then copy and pasted it onto the last one, um, and then completely adjusted 
um, the main thing for this image and the main thing if you're doing blends from different times of day, which this was because it took, it took our time to get it right, is the temperature. Um, because it's not always about just pumping it down to get it blue. Um, for instance, here, I oh know I have moved it down. Um, I think this one here, then it should be me. I think this one's increased a little bit. Oh no. I mean, that's yeah. our shot. Now so that that's okay. But it, yeah. Now that they say it, it sounds quite obvious. Like, of course you have to match those photos. But when you're thinking about it, when you're <laughs> just shooting, you perhaps sometimes. Just don't think about that you have to match the color and the temperature and the exposure of those yeah. images if you want to blend them seamlessly. Yeah. And and obviously they're all different because you're not going to do a... So this was a six second exposure, but I wasn't a six second exposure just having me. And then I think we changed a few things here and there. So yeah, there's a lot more to it than that. But yeah, you're right. Sorry. So back to the original question. Yeah. So I will often put on a previous preset that I've used for an image that's roughly um, similar lighting. And then I'll adjust it all internally here. Um, in Lightroom. Uh, once I have the image that I'm happy with, I usually actually export them just to check how they look on a phone because as you guys all know, and everyone knows on Instagram, a phone, whether it's a Samsung or an iPhone or whatever it might be, they look different. So having them together is important to then check it out. So I always check it out, see if it matches the colors, see if how it looks. Um, and it's less about, is this image, you know, it's obviously not a ready image to post. It's more about, do, do these colors match what I'm looking for on a phone screen? Um, I'll then make any more final adjustments and then um, I'll then be like, right, it's time to then import it. So just, um, yeah, I think that's a right click is what it's known as. Um, and then I just go into editing and then I just go into Photoshop and then that will then bring it up into Photoshop. And I'll do the same thing for the, the three images or two images or even one image if we're just cleaning it up, which we'll go through. So. Um, I should have said this at the beginning, but we'll do we'll do two to three images depending on how much time we've got. Um, one of them being this image here, where it's multiple, obviously layers, uh, and then we'll also go through what I just did for May fourth, which was a shot, um, which how you know obviously cleaning and how powerful Photoshop is for just cleaning and how simple the difference between a before and an after will be. Uh, and I've also got a potential for another shot which hasn't been seen yet, if there's time. Um, so, depending on how all this um, goes. A marathon. <laughs> just quickly before we jump into that, two questions. Um, first of yeah, all, great. relating to the colors, um, do you have or do you work on a color calibrated monitor or display? Good, good question. So, um, so right now well, I'm working on my <laughs> right now working on my on my MacBook Pro. Yeah. Um, I do have a ViewSonic um, Color Pro mm -hmm. monitor, which is here, which I do work on, and that has 100% RGB rating. Um, as you can see, I'm really technical, uh, which is an amazing <laughs> monitor, which I do use, um, especially if I'm setting up for like a mul you know multiple edits, and I'm I'm in for the you know for like a 10 hour editing session. Um, then I do set that up and use that. Um, but no, other than other than, well, those those are my two things but, I have currently. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I mean, if you um, mostly post to social media, I mean, at least in my opinion, most users and end users, most viewers don't have a color calibrated screen either. So why would you need one? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, of course, no, if exactly. You go into printing then obviously, yeah, you would need that. Yeah. So it, it's very different. And, and as you say, like, I think that, I mean, Eve, I mean, I know I do this. I over edit for social media because realistically, people are probably aren't even going to stop for more than a few seconds to check out that that gum is not on the floor. But for me, it's really important that. <laughs> That, that you know that I have gone in and I've completely taken away every single bit of of dirt for instance on here on the floor because it will oh, hello man, what's going on there? um because it will you know clean up the image dramatically with with how it's all how it's all looking so yeah I think I, I definitely go in on the edits a bit more than uh, than a lot of people do and the second thing not really a question but more of a tip uh, command or control e in Lightroom to Edit in Photoshop, so you don't have to right click and. Amazing. Command. There you go. Control E. Yeah. And that should open this Photoshop. This is why we have Tim here. This is our, yeah. All right. Love this it. Is yeah. All, he, he, you I've need him like any time personal. of day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You just call <laughs> Can me. Can I call you at 2 a.m.? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll be 2 a.m. because that's when I edit. Awesome. Oh, no. All right. So now we are in Photoshop, and um, nice. which image would you like to um, start with? Um, well, I'm happy. So we can either go into the, the cleaning up of, of an image or we can go into the this one here with the blends. What do you guys reckon? Why don't we start with this one first? Because that's one we had in Lightroom also. Yeah. Okay. 
Great. Okay, cool. So yeah. So again, as I mentioned, and this is the great thing about creativity and, and photography in general, there's no right or wrong way about, um, how to do this. So if you do it differently and you can think of the same way to do it and you're watching this and you're like, I would do it this way, but that makes sense because of, you know, the way that he's doing it, take this way. I do it, use the way you do it, whatever. Um, so yeah, so the background image I'm going to use is this one here because this was kind of like the, the overall color. I made sure that this color in the sky here was in fact the color that I, that I wanted. Um, it matched my feed. Um, the kind of bits of orange popped, the orange was perfect here. Um, but it did, was going to require, I knew a lot of work. I didn't worry about the bottom half here because, um, I knew that I was blending a second image and then obviously I have to slot myself in here, um, with that part. So. Yeah, of course, I so, it, it helps if the camera is really locked in on a tripod, so you don't have any movement from shot to shot. Of course. Sorry. Yes. So yeah, no, absolutely. So again, with the, with these blends, um, really important that makes it so much easier if you have a tripod you're there you're set up you take your shot and you don't move it at all you take your shot again because then they will line up seamlessly or hopefully seamlessly on um yeah on your uh <laughs> on your page on your uh photoshop but for instance i'll just show you an example quickly here um that you can do it without and we'll maybe bring this image up later on if there's time, but there's a snow image I took here where obviously I wasn't on a tripod and it was um, a lot going on. And this image here um, was actually not no tripod and two images. And I, and I had to wait for a bus. So I sh shot the bus and then I was like, there's something missing. There's a person missing. And I saw a person over here. So I didn't move probably, I was like this. I didn't move for probably 15 seconds in, or maybe longer, 30 seconds in the freezing snow, <laughs> waiting for this person. And then I shot it. And then I managed to blend them together because I didn't move too much. So you don't have to have a tripod, but obviously, as you say, a tripod is definitely going to be um, the best thing to have for this to make it easier. I mean, just to say really quickly, um, those are my favorite shots. If you have quote unquote invisible effects, where if you wouldn't have told me, I would have had no idea that this one wasn't a shot in camera. Just yeah. Composite. Crazy. And it, and I, I mean, and I would have loved to have captured the bus, the snow, and the person with the umbrella all in one. I mean, that would've been amazing. And sometimes it happens. Sometimes it does happen when you get that lucky. But that's the, the amazing thing about Photoshop is that you can just you can. I had this vision in my head where I was like, I need an umbrella, I need a bus, I need the snow. And although it's it's there in my head, it was then there on paper at the end of the day because I made it happen with the, with yeah, the power. If only of, we of had it. an app to combine photos in some sort of shop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Okay. Photoshop. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, plenty of ways to do that. This, I'll just use the lasso tool. No need to be overly, I mean, yeah, you can be much more, um, precise, but so for this part, I know that I'm the, the, the part that needs to go in. It's just me pretty simple. Um, so I'm just going to move that into the image, which is going to be the final, which is going to be the base image, um, which is this image here. So obviously you can then match it. You can see, uh, however you want to pull it in. So hopefully my computer doesn't become really slow and laggy. Slow motion. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> I love this anytime, it, it anytime it does that, anytime it does that, you guys can just start talking and then we can. Edit this in post. Um, I also have yeah. this with my MacBook, but curiously, never with the uh, less powerful MacBook. Mm, interesting. So, so I don't know. Annoying, but um, so opacity. So for the, anyone that doesn't, what's going on here? Anything for anyone that doesn't know? Opacity here, really easy, just to adjust. Um, I'm sure Tim has a shortcut that I don't have, but um, uh, the numbers, the numbers the, keys, uh, one through. Uh, nine. Ooh, there is one. <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, oh, wow. Okay. I feel like this is the best, best masterclass ever. I'm being talked about. <laughs> Hang on. So what do I do? So if I go, um, you don't have to even have the menu open. You just can escape out of that and just um, use the numbers keys on your keyboard. So highlight the layer and select yeah. the layer and numbers keys. Should, um, oh, you, that's 80%. mad. All right. That's there we go. Now, okay. Oh, wow. So if we just cut that out, I'll <laughs> go. <laughs> and Pretend. If we, all right. Yeah. Uh, Mike, show us how would you change the opacity? So you can actually just highlight it. So click yeah. the layer and then you hit the uh, the numbers. So if we want 70, I'm going to go 50, for instance, oh, we get five. Yeah, thanks, mate. Appreciate that. Wow. 
And you can also, for um, um, yeah. fine adjustment, you can hover over the text opacity and click and drag and move to left to right so you don't have to open the slider. I was going to say that as well, but <laughs> beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so obviously the layer, we want to match it as 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 best we can. And mm -hmm. because we were on a tripod here, it's, it's kind of easier. Um, but even so, you'll see the... Whoa. What is happening? It's just, it does this like laggy thing sometimes. Here we go. Um, Gonna investigate that. So yeah, it should have it should have the. Uh, if you can see on the screen here, there's, I mean, the adjustment of like where it would be. So up sixty nine eighty nine. So it's too high, too low. Um, usually that's pretty accurate, but sometimes you may be you may have slightly moved to so Photoshop doesn't actually quite realize you're right and you're not right. So that's why opacity is uh, good to turn down and use. So I'm going to try and match myself with the, hopefully my face isn't in the, in the, uh, <laughs> the webcam here. Uh, I'm going to try and match myself with the, the bottom layer and the back bit. So. Or use let's... arrow keys on a keyboard to move it. And shift arrow keys for uh, 10 pixel increments. If you want to precisely wow. match it. All the shortcuts. <laughs> Mad. Anyways, so that's, <laughs> I mean, I can't remember how I did it. That's probably, you know what, I'm going to go in a bit more. Um, yeah, so you can see I'm pretty much in position there. So that's good. That's good for me. Now there are other, there are lots of ways to do this. And because I'm quite lazy, I found a lazy way to do it. Now, again, Tim's going to probably be like, oh, I'm not saying anything. Real. Um, <laughs> is that I just literally get the eraser and then I erase around it. Now, obviously you can create masks, which is a much safer way. Oh, Tim, <laughs> the Tim police. Of course, um, the safest way would be to use smart objects. Yeah. But obviously, you know, if you're, not, you know if, you're not, if you're not risking it, then... Honestly... <laughs> um, no, but honestly, um, sometimes the uh, the eraser tool is actually really, really useful because you know that you won't ever, ever use those outside pixels again. So why should you keep them? And working destructively sim can sometimes... By the way, zero for 100% on the keyboard. Ha, there um, we go. Sometimes you just know that you won't need them anymore. So why keep them? Precisely. Well, That's the reason I did it. <laughs> also, it's much um, more fun yeah. living on the edge. Well, yeah, I mean, okay. I mean, the reason that I, I got, as I said early on, like, because I never did any, I just got, got Photoshop one day and I was like, right, how do I do this? And I was just playing around and then that's the way I've always done it. So, and I was having this discussion with a, with a, with a close friend recently, who's an incredibly talented editor and, and stuff and, and we were learning from each other and obviously you're just like oh actually that's mad that you can do that and that's how you do it where versus someone else would say that i do it this way or i do it that way but as long as the results you're getting at the end are the ones that you know you're wanting or the client's wanting or whatever it is the end result needs to be then that's what it matters so um yeah so for this part i was just getting rid of as you say all unwanted pixels see ya i had a feather on so it's uh quite soft so then i would zoom in and make sure that i'm then getting because you can see if you didn't just get rid of the layer you can see actually what it is um so obviously i'm going to be getting rid of all of any external um mess and anything that's not needed and then i'll go right in and get just make sure that i'm the the kind of sole focus here uh you can see that the blues don't match up so obviously the blue uh, that we wanted is sorry yeah go ahead could we just try something really quickly just to see if we yeah, can uh, fix this zoom issue if you go to photoshop on the top left and to yeah. preferences and under tools it should be and then uh, animated zoom yeah click on tools and uncheck animated zoom on the right perhaps that will speed things up cool hopefully wow Troubleshooting live, I love it. I know, that's really good. Right. <laughs> nope, it didn't. Well, we tried. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I will investigate yeah. further. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's see if I can Yeah, we'll have a, have a think. If you've got another one, just interrupt <laughs> me and, uh, and, we'll, and we'll give it a go. Um, but yeah, so then the idea for this, and I'll obviously go into it in reasonable 
detail, but it might not be as clean as the end product that I had before. Um, things to think about, notable things to think about are, for instance, if you were just to clean up one side and not the other, one's a long exposure that's six seconds and one's a long exposure that's probably like two seconds. So you see the water is very different here. So when you are blending, just be aware of your exposure times. And if they do differ, then how will that affect the image in consistency? Um, so just, yeah, think about that when you are doing it. So for me, we obviously have that smooth, consistent water, which we want in the image um, and obviously is needed. So um, yeah, while I'm doing this, any any questions at all or from either of you or from the chat or anything? Yeah, people are really to excited to, to uh, learn more from you. Um, mm -hmm. Love playing with Photoshop. Thanks for the live. Saying never stop learning in Photoshop. Exactly. And um they were talking We've about got Charles March. Carter joining as well. Oh. Wondergasm, who's been with us before. Um, cool. Super cool to see oh, some friendly Oliver with even more faces. pro tips. Uh, you can also oh. type 75 or any other number to get uh, those more precise uh, opacity numbers. This in. sounds completely made up to me. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, this is what's so awesome about the community. Everyone, yeah. Everyone's got a, got a new, a new tip totally. to, to bring to the table. And you also can jump if you, up and down. If and you stand <laughs> up and put your forehead on the keyboard, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Photoshop will become 20% faster. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I need that. <laughs> but I think that's my computer and not uh, probably all the programs I'm running and everything else is going yeah, I mean, you, um, to be fair, you do have uh, Chrome and Photoshop and Lightroom and Audition and Premiere and Zoom. <laughs> all that running. Yeah, my, I don't blame uh, your computer to. Um, be a bit slower today but that's okay and i'm i'm waiting for the new mac to come up the new 16 inch uh macbook pro with the m1 chip so that's my oh, is it coming out soon didn't know well that. i'm hoping so I, oh, well i mean i don't know this is just me this is me this is my speculation where i'm like oh yeah we're gonna i'm gonna wait i'm gonna wait i'm gonna wait so um yeah hoping to do that so um you can go in and change obviously your brushes here um you can have hard you can have soft i prefer to have i feel that soft just kind of works so are you soft? You're um, not working on a track uh, on a, a graphics tablet. No, no, you're right. No, so I'm just working on um, on the trackpad. Yeah, tra on the trackpad. Yeah. I mean, if you on are planning on Which... doing like precise cutting out, then of course having um, a graphics tablet can be really, really helpful because then you can have pressure sensitivity. So you can have one big brush size, and you can just go in there. So that's really great and much better than using a mouse or a trackpad. Mm. But I've seen a lot of people that just are very happy with the 16-inch trackpad, uh, the trackpad of the 16-inch laptop. So a big a big reason I'd never used a monitor until I had the ViewSonic recently and didn't I don't use anything else is because of the travel factor. So when traveling, I would only have my Mac, so therefore I wouldn't want to have anything else in it to make it you know, make the process longer or make just my bag heavier or whatever it might be. Um, so I was very much just like, oh, I'll just use whatever I, whatever I have and whatever I have with me is going to be the best tools I have. And that's kind of the way that I've, that I've just gone about doing things. So, um, right, moving on to this. How do I do this again? Okay, so as you guys will see, okay, that's okay. Uh, we've got this bit of light here, the extended light. So the idea was that I was to match the light with the, with the source. So um, I've done a lot of adverts for, for different brands, one of them being uh, Vodafone, for instance, with a, with a phone, so they're a network provider. The light, light source coming out of the phone um, and that being you know part of the, the, the creative idea. So I thought I'd do something similar with Sony, but changing the color to orange, obviously, for their kind of alpha range. And I wanted to match the the light source to where the camera was but i didn't quite get it right so you can see you guys can see nothing you guys can see <laughs> here the source it, the, the light is is here and i was actually not quite high enough so i will have to and i had had to just adjust and um, use the clone stamp uh, different opacities to then paint it up um as well as obviously uh, putting the light source here. So once I get to where I am, I usually, if I'm in the way of the light source, I tend to change the opacity just slightly um, of the brush to make sure that it's not 
overly um so i'll probably go maybe 80 uh just to bring it in so it's not overly aggressive no i didn't do that I mean, that's just of course one way to also achieve this effect you can also another way that just popped into my head would be to use mm -hmm. um what's it called puppet warp so you would select the um the light streak and then you can okay. use puppet warp to literally put pins in it and move those pins around so you can whack, move it up to the phone that would be one way to do it so how do i do that Teach oh, me now. You, you want to do it right now? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. for sure. And then Tim opens up Photoshop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Live actually, class. No. Um, so. <laughs> you were about to do it. <laughs> Did I tempt you? Um, well, no. It's, uh, you would have to. So what I would do is I would oh, select God. the um, light streak using your favorite selection tool like the quick select. Um, What's the shortcut for that? Uh, W, I think, but that will open your uh, magic wand. So shift W to oh, cycle through, um, shift W. Oh, that's an object, object selection tool. Depends on how you ordered those, um, how you arrange those. There we go. That's it. Now you can hide the layer one that you're on because we don't want to work on the same layer. And then you can select the, um, the lights you have to uh, go back to the background you're on the oh yeah no you have to hide layer one select the background yeah, yeah. and there we go yes voila and have a quick <laughs> click on that so then i would just i would just do that and then uh, and more just even the upper part i suppose yeah also I could, yep there we go and now use command j to move it onto a new layer. So now effectively what you've done, you've copied this selection to a new layer. Uh -huh. Now go to um, edit in the upper left and puppet warp in the midsection about. There we go. Now. Oh. <laughs> yeah. so Here I we can, go. So I can then... Now you can add pins to the most important part. So I would lock the bottom one so you can add some pins to the bottom. You can just click in there and it will add Yep, there you go. And another one perhaps on the bottom left. Just to lock it in place. Yes. And now you can add one at the top. There you go. And now if you click on this white pin at the top, and you can move it around, and hopefully, there we go. Ooh. And of course, you can add more than one pin. You can move it around. You can bend oh, I it. See. You can twist it. Mad. Right? And this, of course, would look Very much, cool. much better if you um, have take a bit longer with a selection, obviously. Of course, yeah, yeah. Um, and of course, one other trick to get rid of this dark-ish background is just to use, um, when you're done, by the way, you can just hit enter. Um, uh, one way to get rid of this darker background would be to use blend modes, like um, add or screen. So this will automatically get rid of this... Um, the darker parts in between of the light streaks. And then does, does it come up as a, so then I can just move it. Well, that also works. And rotate. Yeah. There you go. I mean, I guess I would look, yeah, I, I would probably, that would be, so what I you would, would do take is I would a, go. Take more time yeah, with yeah, that, yeah. of course. And yeah, 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 of course. You can also use, Easy. now when you're in transform, if you actually um, pause there for a second, yeah, there is mm -hmm. a warp tool sort of hidden in the transform. So if you hit Command-T again. And at the top, there's next to the um, check mark on the, next to the, on the right, in the top toolbar. Not at the top, in the top center. Yeah. <laughs> a bit more to the right, a bit more. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there is like this um, window that's sort of transformed. That one, exactly, yes. <laughs> Click on that. And now you can warp um, the selection even more. So now you have these handles in there and they can be really useful. Just click and drag around on them. There we go. Uh, okay. Yeah, I've done this before, but with uh, the ding it for, I can't remember. But is there another way to do it or not? Is this the only um, way? No, that's pretty much the way it is. Usually um, um, in a in few versions uh, yeah, before have... this one, they automatically added like a three by three grid um, now you have to do this on your own, but um, yeah. And this is like right. an alternative to um, Puppet Warp, I suppose. 
And of course, uh, the best thing about this, you can take the layer and move it on top of uh, layer one. And then boom. And then of and course then, yeah, you would so clean up the easy. edge a bit, right? Yeah, 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 add yeah. some smoothing and then in that there. Would... Or even add some glow if you want. Um, mm -hmm. Fascinating. Well, there you go. That's a way better way <laughs> to do it. <laughs> I wouldn't argue My that this is much better. I mean, if, it, if I look at the edge, that's different. really jagged. But um, like I said, yeah, no, can, 100%. this entirely well, depends can I, on... Can I do my old erasing around it? So uh, I can usually sure. bring in... It's just another there you go. layer. So you can do anything that. you want. So then you've We've got... We've got Gareth in the chat who's also saying it would be nice to see something like this animated. Animated? But Gareth, which yeah. app would you use for yeah. that? <laughs> Gareth loves After Effects. We've got a <laughs> strong fan in the chat. Yeah, we have an After Effects counter every time he says After Effects. Uh, counter <laughs> this one because he likes yeah. to talk about After Effects. And Emma, do we have some After Effects in the schedule? Streams. Ooh, I'll have to check that. I think there's a little bit of time um, until our next one, but I think Gareth is the one who is asking for it the most. Um, we, if there's any other requests, let us know. To be fair, we just had one last week with uh, Joe Allen and Tony. Yeah, there was quite the, the stream masterclass, um, but we can ask Tony as well. <laughs> Deep dive into it. Right. Yes, we will use Premiere to animate. That's correct, Oliver. <laughs> 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 All right. So what you are doing right now is to sort of tweak and So yeah, it. so there's I mean there's a there's a number of different so obviously the it's not as clean as I'd want it and I would spend a lot more time well I would actually go well if for now I do I go back and do what you just did, but I would then very easily manipulate the um the the, the curve of it and just make it literally match up to where the camera is. Um but you can see on this image here the overall goal of what we were looking to do and it was to bring it up to the camera so then it's almost like right i'm looking at the sony a7c and then it's you know this this creative um line coming from it and going down down the stairs um so yeah so that's pretty much the first part of the of the blend is is adding the person into the light source um obviously in a bit you'll see it's a very it's quite messy here so this is actually quite a, a long edit and quite a hard one because uh there is also cut some ghosting because i had i was obviously in the light painting and i was wearing a white hoodie so you can see actually the white hoodie here um so I, you know i'll need to get rid of that and stuff but i would recommend if you are doing any light painting for anyone that hasn't done it or, or does do it and doesn't unknow uh is it to wear black because then you're less likely to show up in any ghosting um, and that includes black trainers, which I wasn't wearing there, um, and obviously black hoodie and wear it up because that helps massively. That's clever. Um, so even wear a black mask if you have one. Yeah, there we go. Black <laughs> mask. 2021. Yeah, exactly. No, literally, yeah, because it's very 2021. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. So that's that section. Obviously, the next bit we want to do is um, I normally, rather than clean up everything. I, I kind of like to have my overall image and make sure everything's there. And then I go in for like a cleanup because sometimes I'll do the cleanup on a different day if I'm not in the in the mood to touch a thousand uh, bits of chewing gum or whatever it might be that's that's in the way. Um, so I'll do that. Um, the next thing for us to do then is to bring in, I think it's this one, right? Yeah. Maybe. So this second half here uh, is obviously the second part of the of the light trail so this is this is the uh third image so again i'm just going to grab this oh no actually i wanted the whole thing didn't i um so i'll grab this um making sure that i don't have a feather because if you grab this and it had a feather you don't have a feather around it which is not what we want um so pick it up drag it in um and then that'll bring about the the second half well, the bottom half of the image as it were um so that should line up quite easily because we use a tripod everything should be good and i suppose the... you could use um some of the natural hard edges that are just present in the image as a sort of to um, do a cut to the image so to blend them much more easily um i see that you didn't do that right now but i've assume that you can use uh, soft blending to hide 
the edge, the transition a bit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you wanted to, um, because when I was, I mean, because I wasn't sure what I wanted to use when I was pulling this in, I just kind of like pulled everything in because I don't know if I, maybe I do want to use the top part. Maybe I don't want to use the top. Maybe I want to use this bit. Maybe I don't want to use this bit. So I kind of just, it's a very, there's no like method to the madness. It's very much just like, well, pull it in and just see what happens. Well, if you want to Um, um, be flexible, of course, you can just copy paste the entire image and use a mask to hide parts use a of mask the image. And do that. so yeah, yeah, yeah. you can bring it back and also do it. quickly we have we do have a question diego Go um ahead. photoshop and dream weaver update is chaos um diego this <laughs> isn't really the best place for technical support because you know live chat we can't really help you there so if you need help please contact <laughs> the fine folks at adobe support they will make sure to solve your problem or at least point you in the right direction so contact Adobe support. We can't really help you here. And their so, support team's great. They're yeah. online. To, <laughs> not that <laughs> I'm selling, not that I'm selling, but like I had a, I had a question ages ago about, and I remember, and they were really helpful. So um, nice. that was just to do with my subscription. I think it was, I can't remember. Yeah. Anyways, I just remember being like, oh, they're really helpful. <laughs> um, so yeah, so basically just bringing that back in, uh, making sure that the colors were okay. The bottom was fine. Um, so then we pretty much have the the overall and now we were just doing what i tried to talk about and try to explain you were using the natural edge of the staircase yes sorry yes as a blending point i was yes because then it it nicely fit it nicely fit in um and then everything here i'd already done in 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 uh lightroom to make it to make it what i wanted um so then you can kind of oversee the overall image and how it's coming along so from here and again there's plenty of ways to do this i export it because i want to see how it looks on my phone because that for me that's the most important part is the checking to see how it would look so obviously um command s and that'll pull it back into lightroom so if i was to pull it back into lightroom um that would then bring it i don't know if i'm actually tim you might know this if i hit command s now will it, will it save over the final image i did before so, what do you mean so if i hit come if i hit command save and yeah. save it will it will it re-save over the image that i currently have in there which is the final image that i use for the campaign because i don't want to i'm just trying to think of the you best can save way it as to... a copy if you like how do i do that just file save as Let, yep, file save as, and then it will ask you to pick a name, and then you can save like underscore two or copy or anything if you don't uh, want to mess okay. with your. But then will that will, will that come back into Lightroom? I'm good, good question. Probably not, eh? Because you'd have know. to then re-import it through. I have never tried that actually, so I don't know. Okay, well let's try. <laughs> well, let's try. So this is going to be. Um, we'll find out live. Two. Join us. And then, <laughs> and just um, to answer the question, yes, Matthew, this will be available as a replay here on Behance. If we scroll down, you can see actually all the replays of the past, and of course on YouTube, uh, same URL. You can just hover over I'm the player also, and yeah. um, click on the title. Um, Oliver is saying, I would never had realized this was these. These were two images without seeing the editing. Just assumed you ran all the way down the stairs in one go. <laughs> um, yeah, and it would have been it would have been nice nice to do that, but it, we didn't have enough time, and yeah. it was just too hard to get uh-huh. to get it all um, together. So, in answer to your question, yes, mm. it does save back into Lightroom. Well, there we go. Success. Because here it is. <laughs> um, so then I would export this, look at it on my phone, be like, oh, does this need to change? Does that need to change? What do I need to do? Um, could even be a day later, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, and then I'll reopen it up or I'll merge the layers in Photoshop or I'll, or I'll once I'm happy with it. Um, and then I'll go into like the cleanup process, which is um, a big part, I guess a big part of my workflow because there's so many minor details that need to be, need to be removed that people don't think about and necessarily see until they shown them. And then they go, Oh, wow. Why would I even leave that chewing gum on the floor or that lamppost or whatever it might be? So 
Yeah, it's, um, it's always crazy if you have like t little tiny differences and edits, and at the end you turn off and on the edit layer. It's just like, whoa! Yeah. Crazy. And I do yeah. have a great tip for you um, for zooming in and out when you do fine edits. So if we get into that. Cool. Uh, <laughs> cool. So, nice. yeah, should we go Should we go back yeah. into Photoshop? Yeah. So, okay, so I, I've, I've imported it. I'm happy. I'm like, this is cool. Hang on, what's this one? That's the final edit. No, it's not. This is it. Um, I'm happy with it. It's cool. Um, yeah. So then I'm going to go into the into the cleanup process. Now, again, Tim, you may say there's another way to do it, but obviously <laughs> having the layers all, I'll, <laughs> I'm going to like the layers are all going to be any moment. I'm like Tim's going <laughs> to fire back. <laughs> the, the, the layers, the, the layers will be the layers will be merged. Um, <gasps> No, so how do I do it without doing that? I mean, no, no, it's, uh, so what do you want? That's would what you, I would do. I, I assume you, that, that's it. Yeah, so that's what I would do. No, I assume <laughs> you would uh, like to work with the, um, uh, what's it called in English? The spot healing brush tool, I, I suppose. Yes, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. what I'm, so I'm using, so here, so my two best friends are the spot healing brush and the, and the clone stamp. Oh, well, you are in luck. There's a way to non-destructively do this. So if you undo... Um, or I guess you don't have to. I know we could also do it with the merged version, but it doesn't really matter. You create a new layer on top of all of these. Okay. And now if you um, have a look at the top in the toolbar, it says sample all layers. So somewhat in the center. Yeah, there we go. That's it. And now if you paint using uh, um, the favorite tool that you like on that blank layer, it will sample all the ones below. But all the edits will be made on that new layer. So if you um, hold down the option key and click on the eye next to layer four, it will only show layer four. There you go, on the eye. Yes. And now it should only show that layer, but you may or may not have done any edits. No, there's nothing on it. Oh, well, we didn't do anything yet. <laughs> Obviously no. it's blank. <laughs> so as you can see, when um, you don't do anything, it's still blank. <laughs> well, there you go. Who would have known? Mm. Um, but yeah, this is a great way to um, have all your edits on a separate layer. So if you ever change your mind, you can always go back or dial down the opacity. This is great for portrait photography. Mm. If you um, uh, remove okay. all the wrinkles, perhaps, and the client comes back and like and says, yeah, I like this, but could you just dial it back a bit? You can say, okay, I won't remove the wrinkles. I will just reduce the wrinkles. So Fair. that's... That's clever. And of course, you can you can go down and merge it. And you can still, if you want, uh, create a second layer now and still use this sample or layers trick. But of course, yeah. I mean, I won't stop you from working the way you want to work. So... Um, yeah, yeah. No, that's... I mean, I mean for, for that, like, <laughs> that make No, that's... I mean, especially for, like, portraits or something that does need to be potentially changed. Um, I guess with this, because I know exactly what I was... What I'm doing, there's no need. Um, because there won't be any changes. But, yeah, so you can see there there's a lot of there's a lot going on here there's a lot of reflections there's a lot of so anything that's distracting overall in the image so what do you guys everyone that's watching what do you guys see that see that might be distracting so this for instance super distracting yeah. for me so we need to get rid of it um any marks that are a little bit um you know this for instance the, the well i want to draw the viewer's eye into the center of what's going on here so for instance, this bit of light on this building is actually quite distracting. So, I mean, obviously I'll zoom in and, and make sure it's proper, but um, so for instance, that anything like that for me needs to go because it, it just distracts from what the, what the, the idea is obviously for the, for the viewer to see. So before you zoom um, back out, I quickly yeah. want to um, show you a cool trick is if you zoom, if you're very zoomed in, right, and you just want to quickly yeah. get an overview of um, the image, you can just hold down the H key and use your trackpad to click around. And what this will do is, once it decided to zoom up, uh, there you go, so hold down the H key and now click and drag and hopefully Photoshop should zoom out. Yeah, there we go. Oh, mad, okay. And now you nice. have the bird's eye view. And this is great if you have a giant image and you have a really tiny view window, so it zoomed in all the way and you don't want to zoom out and zoom back in. This is fantastic if you just want to quickly pan to a different part of the image, especially if you don't want to wait for the zoom to animate. Money. <laughs>
And by the way, they um, I have uh, looked it up. This is indeed a bug in Photoshop. An option would be to roll back to the previous oh. version, um, but the Photoshop team is aware of that issue and they are working on fixing it in the next one. Amazing. Good to know. I mean, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, I'll be honest. Like you know, and of course, closing yeah, the I'd, other apps oh, nice. would help. It would help. Nice. Absolutely, <laughs> would help. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, yeah. So yeah. So the cleanup begins. So yes. I mean, you you could leave this. You could not leave this. It's totally up to you. Personal preferences for me. That this structure here. Oh, hang on. I'm just using a trick. This structure here. Oh. Um, <laughs> is 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 obviously a big part of the image. It's an important part of the image, and actually, for what Rich and myself were creating, was that we were. It was a, a two a bit of a challenge. Two photographers, one location, both doing our own different styles. So he does paper cutouts. So his was using this structure for part of his paper cutout for his paper art, and for me, it was using this structure as how to then create light painting um, and do something creative. So. I wanted this to be a main focus and those reflections from the building behind where we were shooting here were just too much for me. So I was like, they gotta go. Like there's no way that that they can that they can be there. So um I would say that I'll do this all now, but this probably took me about an hour and a half. <laughs> Well, um, I was about to know? ask, like how long is your editing process in general? It can be anything from twenty minutes to five hours. Well, did you know yeah. that Photoshop already has an automatic distraction remover tool? Yeah, so if, is that the content? No, content aware. Yeah, just what a joke. No, it doesn't happen. Oh, right. No, oh. Don't. <laughs> Did you know the that you could the use this, <laughs> do this work in five minutes? Well, I wonder, cause, <laughs> because they have so many amazing things. For instance, like obviously what last couple of months ago when you guys released the uh, the sky replacement, which was just mad. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if they do have a, a tool soon enough that just gets rid of everything. Um, but mean, yeah, so there are some ways for you to um, work with uh, content aware tools a bit more smoothly for example the um healing brush so not the spot healing brush but the healing brush where you have to sample first mm -hmm. this one is now live so you immediately see the um effects that this one has and sometimes is that that's, this that's that's the one yeah so this one is great because it works sort of like the mm -hmm. clone stem tool but it also has a look yeah, at yeah, the yeah. brightness and um yeah i tried using this the other day and it and it uh yeah, I just, I don't know, I kept messing up, but maybe I didn't give it a chance. Yeah, it depends on where you really sample. Sometimes um, sampling darker areas can be tricky. Personally, I like to sample a bit lighter because this usually has less noise because, you know, dark areas in a photo has a lot of noise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> and just, yeah, no, that's fair. Uh, Actually, that's a good tip. That's a really good tip because, yeah, yeah maybe the, the the factor of where you're sampling is. It's going to be a big, a big factor of it. And you, um, you could go all crazy. Um, you could create a texture based on that granite, on that stone, and you could use a texture to paste it in. But yeah, honestly, that's a bit too much just to remove those reflections. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the idea obviously is to, to get rid of all those reflections when this stops. Come on, Photoshop. <laughs> And the chat's going crazy for all the Tim tips. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess it's asking for a Tim voice from above <laughs> for all the prompts. I, I love mean, that. We, it's, it's not like we didn't have almost four hours of Photoshop pro tips with yours truly. We've had a, <laughs> mm. Do you know? <laughs> in German and English. That's, how many How many have you done now? I, um, I think two UK streams about Photoshop pro tips and four five for the german ones so yeah it's amazing how much tim can just condense in an hour and a half you're just overwhelmed afterwards and i was hosting yeah. one of those like, make it stop us <laughs> so yeah you guys in the chat should definitely have a look um to you know awesome. the what's the replace yeah. yep yeah for sure um so yeah so obviously everything here will be cleaned up mm -hmm. um and that's everything from stairs to We'll go into into a little bit later on with like chewing gum. Um, <laughs> I keep mentioning that because in London we have a massive problem with every road or whatever it is you're shooting. There's just always tons of uh, tons of gum everywhere. So, which is yeah, really annoying. Um, yeah. So, do you want me, do you want me to, to continue? Like, I'm trying to think what else there is what on here that I would 
I don't think we have to remove every last spot of this image. I would rather have a look at the next one because we only have 25 minutes left. Yeah, I was about to say, okay, let's cool, cool, have cool. a look at another yeah, yeah, yeah. one if you have okay. one ready. Right, so... Uh, I think you can just close that tab. You don't even need it anymore just to save some resources. No, yeah, fair. Yeah, absolutely. Let, let's, uh, let's, get rid <laughs> let's get rid of these. <laughs> um, what, you don't want to save it? Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um... Well, yeah, I mean, I guess, and then for anyone then that's coming in, so this is the final image that we that I then came up with. No, it's not. Sorry. This is the final image that I then came up with. And you can see the difference between what we were playing with in Photoshop just now. And then here's one I made earlier, where everything that was re that was removed, that was distracting, for instance, the light on the, the left-hand side here, this one, which we got rid of, and then all of these reflections here, just to really make sure that the viewer was straight in on what was going on. Um, I left this little reflection here because I quite liked it from the shard, uh, but everything else had to go. I mean, uh, yeah, now that, you, now that I see it, I can actually spot all the differences, especially the reflection of the mm. artwork in the center. That's really a stark difference. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, so cheers. So that was the, uh, that was that one. So we'll go Does back into Photoshop and we'll we'll bring up this image here. So this is the one yes. I posted um, yesterday on Instagram for May 4th. Although one of my followers did let me know that it was the wrong color because May 4th is for the... <gasps> I'm so bad with my Star Wars knowledge. So May 6th is for the Sith. Sith. Are you, either of you Star Wars fans? Yes. Nope, yeah. lost me. <laughs> okay, Tim, the Tim's, like, okay. With you. Tim's gonna Tim again. <laughs> Tim's gonna bring the knowledge for everything. I'm gonna bring up the, the questions oh, no. and then yeah. No, I was doing the right. so, long and prosper from Star Trek because <laughs> we do have a moderator Voodova. She's really into Star Wars and Okay. Just oh. her with that. <laughs> All right. So um Sweet. What did yeah, you do? Yeah, so this image this here photo? So this photo here, uh very basic color grade in um in Lightroom, pulled into Photoshop straight away, and it's, it's, I mean, it's quite a simple image. It's one image. It was just me and my buddies. We were in a tunnel, uh, messing around, and I thought it'd be cool to do something for, for May 4th. We shot this a while ago, uh, but obviously there's just a lot of distractions. So the before and after is, is very striking in terms of what it is that you'll, uh, what it is that you'll, you'll get with the, with the end result here. But this is just just literally because of everything that's here. So I mentioned gum, and we have a huge problem in London with people. <laughs> I'm not going to swear, but why would you chuck your chewing gum out of the window of a car? Um, so all of this just needs to go. So basically, it's just a simple cleanup job. Um, using a spot hill brush, you can you also use obviously uh, the clone stamp, but I think the spot hill brush is is very adequate and a really good. Where are the Spot healing brush is, of course, nice because you don't have to specify a source. You don't have to go and like option click and then again. And I also find that the AI or whatever it is technology that, that that it uses is is pretty much bang on. And obviously, if it's not, you just use Command Z, get rid of it. But I'd say ninety percent of it is 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 really, yeah, good and easy to do. And this, I would say, is in eighty five percent of my images now. Is, is me using this this particular tool to literally clean up an image to make sure that it's uh, just a bit cleaner for Instagram because mm -hmm. you know the more distractions it has the the less likely the viewer is to to do just to invest their viewer time and to look at it and go oh that's really cool like that's a super clean image um, just looks messy so yeah this tool has literally become a major player of uh of my editing process really nice um, and so um, you can already see sorry carry on just quickly because i keep staring at this uh, tool previewer on the left you can also disable that if you want if you're like oh, yes oh. photoshop i know how to do that thank you very much you can <laughs> disable it and if you're curious for those who want to know it's under tool uh, uh, tools in the preferences panel and there's a tool tip uh, checkbox called show tool tips uncheck that and then you won't get these um tool tips anymore just if you amazing already know how to do how to use them so you can already see there's a there's been a there's a big difference um 
I should have created a layer before I did this to show you guys before and after. Well, you can show Silly. before and after using the uh, history panel. Oh, where's that? Go on then. So on the <laughs> right, where it says histogram, there's like a tiny icon that has three squares and an arrow that's pointing up. Uh, to the hang left of this, Instagram. I think my, I think my, oh, my, hang on, my. Uh, you can, uh, you can click and drag that. Um, my things in the way. Yeah, you can just move it away. If it's. So where am I going? Uh, next to histogram, there's like three squares and an arrow pointing up. An icon left the to left. the histogram. That, yep, that's the one. Uh, click on that history, and now you have all the um, actions you did, and you can go back all the way up. You can even take snapshots from different states. Mad. So what do I? How do I get? How do I go? Uh, no, yeah, click on that one. Wanna... That's the one. Of course, don't ah. do anything now because if you change anything now, <laughs> the change will be lost unless, of course, you enable <laughs> non-linear history, which of course you know. Um, but now you have the before, and if you go scroll all the way down again, and and then click that. Yep, that's the one. Oh, you have to click on the text, I suppose. This is for a different tool. Yeah, that one. There we go. Gosh, okay. Whew. Yeah, so you guys can already see the difference is, is just quite dramatic in, in how effective that tool is um, and how powerful it is. And I think that's like one of the one of the biggest things is just also just a lot of people are without sounding like uh, people are lazy. We're lazy. Humans are lazy. So actually what? just spending that extra <laughs> spending that extra five minutes on doing that will make all the difference in your work, like literally. Um make a huge difference uh also obviously the walls so again i'm going to do a very quick version of what i did originally but getting rid of any distractions in the walls um is is just another really good way to to bring the viewer's eye into what it is that we're looking to show and obviously that is uh the lightsaber and the and the may 4th kind of vibe we've got going on here but i can't help um, but notice it, you have a symmetry problem on the ceiling like I, the lights I do have a smoothie problem, and actually, so this is, so this is, I was OCD. lazy in my, in my original edit, and I didn't edit them in, and I was thinking when I posted yesterday, I was like, ah, oh, oh, no. do I go back in and do it? I just didn't have time, so, but no one, well, no one on the, uh, on the no. comments mentioned it, but. Yeah, Tim's gonna go there a, after this. Tim's well, gonna go there. Yeah. And go on my page. And What's like, your story again? Hang on, hang on. Just a second. Go, hang on. So M visuals, and he's gonna go M visuals. Uh, I hear that you need to in Photoshop. You need to uh, bring this symmetry back to life. You're like, yeah, please comment. It boosts engagement. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, get it. Even if, even if, whatever it is, get oh, those comments. No. Tim is like, discuss. Um, <laughs> just yeah, let's have a discussion go. on the comments. Section. Yeah. <laughs> um, nice. Right. Yeah. <laughs> of course, there are plenty of ways to achieve the symmetry effect. You can copy and paste it over. You can use the clone stem tool, which do, does have an option to flip the source. Yeah. Great. So that that's the way I that's the way I would oh, I would probably do it. Um, mainly because it's the only way I know how to do it. Or I would or I would literally just flip the image and then blend oh, it in and just, and just use yeah. that. Um, this is um, which I've done for prior stuff. This is a great tip um, if you are working with a clone stem tool. Sometimes, like when you're cloning an edge and it's just not rotated the right way, there is a way um, to open the preferences and you can have up to five presets for that. So you can flip the source, you can rotate the source. Oh. You can... you know okay, did not know that. Well, I, I knew how, I knew you can flip it, but how, where's, where's, where's the presets? Um, Let's bring it out for the people. So or go to the clone stem tool. I don't yeah. think this works for the spot healing brush. Yep, there we go. And then on the top, there's like this folder with a clone stamp uh, icon on it, right above the layer name. There you go, that's the one. Click on that. And there you have a couple of options. At the top, you have those ah. presets, and they remember the settings. These are in here, eh? Exactly. So you can click on any one you like. They are all the same if you don't change them, obviously. And then of you can... Um, use an offset you can have i think even different opacity over and, and many more settings that you can see right there and um this also has a option called frame offset which i've never seen before i assume that's for animation so a question for people and for yeah. me if so the the initial <laughs> this first one here is always going to be the, the, the one that's the one that you if you automatically just click on clone stamp, that's going to be the one that it that it picks right so i don't want to mess yeah. with that one yes or is that 
Okay, so then we're going to go to the second. I'm not sure if it remembers um, the one you click on, but the first one you can just keep intact. And I, th I think you can even reset this one. Um, okay. But I haven't tried that yet. To be honest, I don't use the clone stem tool that often, so... Uh, okay. But yeah, that's definitely there. I will check it out and see if it behaves differently for you in just a moment. While you keep working, I don't want to take yeah, away yeah. too much time. No, I'm just no. This is cool. This is really cool. I'm um, getting my own tutorial. While I'm doing a tutorial. <laughs> um, so yeah, so clone stamp again yes. is a really powerful way to 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 clean up images. Um, but with this one, I literally think because it's quite a dark image. It was actually quite a simple edit because as you can see, like this car sign here needs to go. Um, but I did want to match that. So let's see if the clone stamp will do it. No, the spot hill brush will do it. If it doesn't do it, then we'll have to use um, the clone stamp. Yeah, so it's not it's not quite feeling the... Uh, and it will remember the um, last the clone source you picked. So if you go back to a different tool and go back to the clone stamp, it will remember the last source, and then you can change it back to the first one if you like. Okay. And of awesome. course, you can hide that panel Great again if you don't need it anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna use it because I wanna nice. I wanna set mine up after this. <laughs> <And> <laughs> I have several ones that I always go back to and then do, and I'm like, oh, yeah. I've got to re redo it. So. And there are even more options really you can cool, change really in the cool blend kit. mode of that tool, and yeah, it's crazy. Super cool. Um, so yeah, so I'm just going to want to, basically I want to have it, the symmetry intact with mm -hmm. what we've got going on here. So not essential that it's overly lined up. Um, we're just bringing in some of those, the brickwork, the darker brickwork and the, uh, and the, and the black line here. And uh, um, Sandrine says too much symmetry is a bit boring. Your I, ne I need say. something to navigate, I think. And that's exactly right. If you, if you could just flip the image, well, that's boring. You could just mirror it i guess but that would look weird yeah so i yeah so mirroring i'm i'm a little bit cautious of mirroring yeah Mir mirroring. mirroring um mirror i'm a little bit cautious of mirroring because i, I feel that i feel that sometimes that's th there's the symmetry and then there's imperfection yeah and imperfection with perfection i think is a really important part of for me anyways as a viewer i really enjoy um enjoy that so for instance there's you know the brickwork although it's the same it's not the same it's it's quite a quite a different um look and feel to it and it has a bit bit more to it but again there are, i have done it in the past um with certain projects and certain things like and it looks really cool oh, uh, it, yeah well, i think your your app was just disconnected sorry yeah uh, oh out of battery <laughs> no, that's okay just keep going and pretend like nothing ever happened <laughs> okay but um, I like that um, yes, Angus in the chat is being quite clever as well. He says you could just remove some of the lights on the other side instead of adding them. <laughs> so he's like, beat the system, like just it. remove. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that <actually work>. yeah. <laughs> That would. That, that, I think that's, that's a great a idea. Really, really interesting way of doing it. And hang on. I'm not no, yeah, now you would that. have to use either the clone stem tool or the other one because Photoshop doesn't know if you want to add more lights or if you want to take them away. Yeah, and then got, I just love that. And literally like that, we've got more. <laughs> there we go. Um, but yeah, so that was that was the the next tip, kind of. Yeah, and the other thing was obviously the lights we could add in. Um, but yeah, super simple, really important thing that I that I do regularly that I get asked about a lot, and a lot of people asking um, and slide in the DMs asking about editing and cleaning up, and it's literally that simple. And you can see um, the yeah. The, the before and after, if I can remember how to do this. Uh, history panel on the right. Yeah, there we go. And scroll all the way up. So we've got the before wow. image and the after image coming up three, two, one. Nice. And it just makes it just makes it a little bit more, you know, it's not a perfect image. And yeah, right, there are imperfections in the symmetry. But at the same time, it just makes it, it draws your eye in straight into the into the, the source of what we want it to be. Oh, it makes a huge awesome. difference. And of course, if yeah. you want, you could tweak even more of that image. You can make the lightsaber longer. <clears throat> and um, <laughs> yeah, have can... even more fun. Change the color if you want it. Uh, I should have changed it to, to the anyone that's a Star Wars fan. What color should it have been today, yesterday? May 4th. Well, this do you want to know how you could change it really in an easy way without selecting anything? 
Yeah, we have about 10 minutes. So either we keep on this one or we open up a new one. <laughs> let's let's keep on this one then because yep. um, if we do a new one, I'm, we're going to be in again. We're All losing. Right. Well, let me show you something <laughs> really, really cool. So let's, do um, this. let's add an adjustment layer. The way you do that is in the layers panel at the bottom, the center one, that should be like this black and white. That's the one. Yeah, and you can fine. hue and select uh, saturation. Yeah. Exactly. But now... Without Wait. selecting? Well, yeah, you just did it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you already oh. know how to do that. Okay, <laughs> fine. <laughs> but yeah, the, the really thing I cool wanted way. to say That's is um, exactly just the way you did it. You can select uh, certain hues of um, an image so you don't have to mask out the red color because that would be really difficult. Mm -hmm. this yeah, is this is a really, one. really, really great and quick tool. I'm all about um suddenly a quick change and obviously getting look as you can see in the, again if you go back to the instagram which we'll, we'll finish on in, in a minute in case anyone's joined late and, or didn't doesn't remember the beginning part there's lots of reds and lots of blues so i do try and match those colors to make it consistent and this is actually one of the tools that i a sneaky tool that i use quite regularly just to adjust just little things here and little things there really really nice Okay, and of course, the great benefit of having an adjustment layer is this one is completely non-destructive. So if you ever decide to get rid of that again, you can always just hide the layer and um, change it out or even mask it out. So you could have a different reflection if you wanted to. I don't know why you would, yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, you could paint it with black. <laughs> I'll have a yellow, yellow reflection with a, a pink, <laughs> pink lightsaber. Um, and Sandrine says, when Some you... tips. Yes, if you go too far with um, the destructive editing of the image, the history panel won't save you always because Photoshop, of course, doesn't keep unlimited history states. Um, there is a preference in the preferences um, where you can change how many states Photoshop will save. I think the default is like 99 or something like that. Um, but yeah, you cool. can change it and you can take snapshots and um, those will be saved as long as you have the document open. And that's just really great. Um, all right. So, oh, would you awesome. like... I mean, I do have a cool pro tip, another one, if you want. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So, uh, this one is regarding the, um, the ceiling lights because... Like you said, you sometimes want to clone. That's, that's still so, annoying you. No, no, yeah, I thought we left that. <laughs> what are you talking about? We closed the topic. <laughs> no. um, this one is really great because sometimes you do want to clone an object, but the size isn't quite right. And wouldn't it be great if you could clone perspective in a perspective way? So you can tell Photoshop... This is a plane, and I would like to clone something from way back over there and move to the front. Wouldn't that be great? So there's a way to do that. So select the background layer, go to Filter. In the top. There you go. And Vanishing Point. Yes, that's it. Now a new, fin uh, new um, workspace will open. And in there, you have to tell Photoshop what the ceiling is. So you can just click um, somewhere at the top on the left. Um, yep, there Like we go. here? Yep, that's great. And now somewhere on the right. So you want to tell Photoshop um, how the ceiling looks. Yep. And now somewhere in the back of the um, tunnel. Yep, down there somewhere. And one last time, a bit on the left, so you can make some sort of a rectangle. And on the left, not the right. Like there? Sorry, left. A bit to the Wait, left. Wait, hang on, but like... Yep, there we go. Yeah, that was... Yeah, about there. Oh, okay, right. And now you should see... I'm not sure if that's appearing on our screen. There should be some sort of grid. No, it, doesn't, it didn't do anything. Maybe it's what, it was a bit too small. Oh, there, there we go. go. Now, you can take the corner points and move them a bit out. So the top one, put it all the way to the right. Um, I know the top, the top right corner one. Move that one to the right. This one here. And even more where the ceiling, like the dark part, meets the wall. Sure, okay. 
And I think oh, you have to move the lower way. part also, um, because the lower corner is a bit weird. Yeah, that one. There we go. So you can pretend like there's a grid and you can sort of pin it to the um, ceiling of that tunnel. Right, here we go. Yes! And if you did everything right, you should see that grid. And of course, it would take more time to adjust this. And now, when you are happy with that, let's just pretend that this is perfect. You nailed it. You have the yeah. um, clone stamp tour on the left in the toolbar. And now, this one behaves just like any other clone stamp tool. You can source okay. and sample from source anywhere there. in that grid. And Photoshop will automatically match the perspective, the size, the alignment. So, for example, you could um, sample one of the uh, front lights. Oh, now you close it. <laughs> oh, no. Wait, hang on. But it went, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, um... let's go back to it. It wasn't letting me. Uh, I think you have to do it again. Do it, now, let it close it. Yeah, just quickly. Perfect. Right. Now, I mean, you have to sample it first using the um, Alt or Option key. So yeah, it select this wasn't. one. Yep. Yeah, and use Alt or Option to um, sample. Yep. Now, sample any of the lights, anything really. Is it working? And now you can click and. There we go. Oh, I see. Now see? it's working. Okay, cool. Yes. Cool, cool. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remote editing. Woo. -hoo. That was quite an achievement. <laughs> and of course, you would take a bit more time with a grid. And this one is sort of an easy oh, cool. one to edit. But now you mm -hmm. can paste those um, lights even further in the back. And you can see Photoshop will automatically adjust the size. The size. And yeah, now, yeah, yeah. now imagine yeah. if you had more than one uh, plane, if you had like a corner somewhere at the building and you want to clone from the floor to the wall, that's how you would do it. Crazy. All right, Sick. that's that's it from me. That's my pro Genius. tip. Three minutes until the uh, <laughs> stream is over. You can close it just. Don't need to save it. Tim is Amazing. unstoppable. Yeah, that's Ooh. cool. That's cool. And one more. No, okay, I'm, I'm done for today. That's it. That's it. We have someone in the chat saying that Tim's the Adobe Jedi. <laughs> yeah, literally, <laughs> so yeah. there, that sums it up. <laughs> All right. All oh, right. That's so cool. That was awesome. Wow. Packed. <laughs> yeah, we didn't get around yeah. to the final piece, Mike, but I think we covered quite a lot yeah, anyway. No, yeah, yeah, we did. We did but quite I a think... lot there. And, and as you said, Tim, it's suddenly an hour and a half just flies. Yeah, it especially if I ramble crazy. on with the tips. Um, but we will see that image, <laughs> if I'm not wrong, we will see that very soon on your Instagram. The one we did. Yeah, so this actually, to. oh, the one, yeah, so the one we didn't get to was uh, just the next one, which I'm, oh, no, it's not that one. Uh, yeah, which we will get onto. This was another image I was going to then clean up and get rid of. and But this image, as you said, will be on Instagram very soon. No spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so thank you so much for what this. a way to wrap up yeah yeah thanks mike for joining that was awesome <laughs> no problem thank you very much for both of you yeah having me on on the uh on the live stream nice um, and just a final bit as well tim i think we have a schedule for this week and the next weeks just want to sneak a little bit because i want to go back to after effects i had a look and we will have after effects at the end of the month uh with an almost full week um of uh kind of 3d animation um and uh illustration as well so stay tuned gareth this one's for you <laughs> uh, <laughs> and <laughs> this friday we'll be back on Photoshop and lightroom again so uh on a no streak. Uh, we'll Even keep going with Anna. Exactly. Um, and also can't any final wait bits? for next week. I mean, we do have even more great Photoshop illustration and even some portfolio reviews. Ooh. We will. Awesome. All right. Then. Well, yeah. Any you... any uh, any final questions? Always hit me up on Instagram at Emperor Visuals. And anyone looking to join the Shooters community, which we also talked about um at uk.shooters here in the uk or world.shooters and we have these amazing communities around the world as well um in america and also looking to build them around europe as well so yeah thank you very much all right and amazing. don't forget we do have a discord for everyone who had hasn't had enough of adobe live i will show <laughs> the link right here there we go so do join the discord if you haven't already um where there are always Emma's there. So if you want to send a message at 3 a.m. in the morning, um, just 
I will not reply. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll see you over there. And if you still haven't enough, if you still want to see more of Adobe Live, we do have the US streams. They will be starting in uh, four hours, three and a half ish. Can't remember. Um, yeah, <laughs> soon, very soon. And um, thank you very much, Mike. This was a pleasure seeing you work. And Emma, thanks for joining. It was wonderful having thanks. you here. Thanks for, for having the, me. Pleasure. For the conversation. And um, any last words, Emma? Mike? Always here for the jokes. Always here. Oh, that's it. Happy Wednesday to you all. And see you soon on the stream again. All right. Bye, everybody. Cheers, team. Thank you.